welcome to Pay It Forward. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a professional cheerleading bow. I have two daughters who are all-star cheerleaders and we first developed this bow design, the three of us, when my girls first started out in the sport. As you can see it went from there and we have been creating bows for teams around the world and for our own personal use for some time now. As you can see if you know how to make them yourself, there's no limit to how many you can have. This is one of my, this is my eldest daughter's cheer bag. Believe it or not, there is a backpack under all of those. So you can see the potential there. Perhaps you would like to make cheer bows for your team or perhaps you cheer mums out there, you might want to even, you know, start your own little business. This bow is of a standard that you can feel confident that you can make them for teams, sell them, and, and it's a really good product. Now there is a template that you will need to download. If you click on the link in the description below, you'll be able to download your free PDF template. It's a folding template for this bow. Print that one out, and then we'll, I'll walk you through some of the supplies that you're going to need. Now first off, I'd just like to show you that when I'm making bows, I actually use a standard ironing press. Um, we bought that second hand, I think it was only about $40 just on the secondary market. It's been fantastic. It's great because it has that flat base for pressing your bows out flat. It's really simple to use. It's not very big and it has been working for a couple of years now, all day long, no problems at all. So if you're looking at perhaps making some, some team orders, it really might be worth picking up one of these because it just makes the job a whole lot easier. You can, of course, use an ordinary household iron, and we certainly will be needing uh, just your normal iron for parts of making this bow today. Just thought I'd show you that one because it's been really useful to me. So here are the supplies you'll need to start on your bow. First up, you'll need a 75 centimetre length of grow grain ribbon, which is three inches in width. That's a larger size training bow. You can choose any colour. I'm using contrasting colours today so it's easier for you to see. You'll also need a piece of lycra. Lycra comes in all of the fantastic shiny cheerleader type colours. A strip of that that will accommodate your strip of ribbon. Then you'll need some heat and bond. We call it heat and bond, we call it Vliza Fix. It's actually fusible web. Now you can pick that up at your local craft store or sewing centre. I actually buy mine in bulk because I obviously use it a lot. I buy it on the roll. If you're looking to be making perhaps a few team orders, it's worth going to your craft store and asking them if you can get them to, to get you one of these because it's much cheaper to buy it in bulk like this. Otherwise, when you go to your craft store, they will actually sell it to you off the roll and you can purchase perhaps just a quarter of a metre. They'll cut it this way so you'll get a couple of strips out of it and you'll be able to try try the bows out, see if you like them and then perhaps you could you could order some more of that that way. So you'll also need some centering ribbon for your bow. We found over the years that the, the big three inch cheer bows look best when they're centred with a six mil ribbon. A lot of people use the, the 10 mil for the centre, but when you use a 6 mil, the bow just looks neater, it looks more finished, and it looks like a much bigger bow. So we always use the 6 mil, and that's grow grain also. So choose a colour that, that suits your bow or perhaps contrasts. You will also need just a little snippet of 10 mil. That's just a backing, uh, back blocker for your bow. It's just a little scrap that you need. Also, if you can get a hold of a little alligator clip, I use that in the folding and it's just like an extra pair of hands and, uh, and it's really useful. You'll need a couple of wire twisty ties. Just pull them apart and have two together. Just have a couple ready because you might want to refold your bow a couple of times until you get used to the folding. Um, you'll need a hair tie. You need one that doesn't have any of the metal clips or bindings and a flat rolled style is best for gluing on. You'll need a very sharp pair of scissors 
because we're going to be cutting the lycra off of the ribbon once it's fused on. You may find some needle nosed tweezers useful here just for picking up little bits of ribbon and bits and pieces like that. You'll also need some hot glue, um, my trusty hot glue gun here. Um, and you'll need to have your template, your folding template PDF, your free PDF printed out ready because that's going to make the whole thing very, very easy for you. So the very first thing we're going, you're going to need to do is cut a 75mm strip of your heat and bond and cut it exactly 3 inches, exactly the width of your ribbon and with a normal household iron here and even I use the household iron for this part we're just going to press that heat and bond strip onto our grow grain ribbon. You can do it, you don't need a protective cloth, you have a, a very hot iron and you just start at one end and run the iron down till that's completely fused on. So we'll do that. So here's our grow grain ribbon with our fusible web applied. We're just going to peel off that backing paper and discard that. Now our next step is to actually fuse our lycra and our ribbon together. So on the wrong side of the lycra we're going to take our glued side and because we're making this bow just all one colour it's a pretty simple job of just making sure that that's nice and flat. Always have your lycra pressed first so it's nice and flat. Now I will take that and I will press it with a protective cloth, put a protective cloth over and I will do it. Obviously my heat press is only this long so I'll do one end at a time and I will press that and fuse that on there just as you would any applique work. You can do the same thing with a normal household iron. It will take just a little bit longer. You'll have to make sure that you really press down firmly and take your time and use a protective cloth always, otherwise that uh, grow grain will melt. So we'll do that and then we'll show you the next step. So now our lycra and our ribbon are fused together. You can see that, that's nice and flat. Next task is to, we want to just trim away the excess lycra. You can see today that when you're cutting your lycra piece to accommodate your your ribbon, you can be a lot more conservative with the piece. I'm just being, um, uh, you know, a little uh, probably overzealous because I just want you to be able to see very clearly what I'm doing here. We will be cutting off the excess, so we start with the end. Now you'll find that grow grain, the ends are going to be burnt at the end, so don't worry too much about those. But you can see why we need a nice sharp pair of scissors always cut from this side obviously so that you can see grow grain has like a little a little rim, a little lip on the edge which is actually very useful you can see, I don't know if you can see there but the the glue has really sealed that, bonded that right to the edge so we're really pretty safe to get our scissors right up, butt up against there and just take your time and again when you're cutting with scissors and you want a smooth line you always cut right up into the axis of the scissors and use the whole length of the of the cut and you'll get a smoother line. You can see that you can get quite close to the edge there. You just trim the entire length. If you miss any little pieces you can always come back and trim but I just find cutting it that way right up against the edge just makes it a beautiful clean line. You can see that it's pretty clean there. Turn it over and that's a lovely sharp edge. We use Lycra. Lycra is used on chia bows because of its flexibility because obviously it's glamorous and shiny and wonderful but most of all it's fantastic because it doesn't fray. So just trim off all of the edges around your ribbon there and then we'll start with the fold. So there we have our ribbon all trimmed away and I've just given that a, a little extra press once I've cut that out. You can see that's a really clean finish. Just while we're doing this I'm just going to show you 
Here, this bow is going to be obviously just all one colour and they look fantastic. You can certainly use all sorts of lycra if you, if you want some more prints and so on in your bow. I will let you know that I am going to be uh, putting up another tutorial a little further down the track where I'm going to introduce you to one of my favourite craft toys of all which is my, uh, my digital plotter, uh, Craft Robo and I'll show you how to actually cut out heat transfer vinyl, plot and cut out heat transfer vinyl and I'm going to show you how to put text and imagery on your bows before you fold them up so you'll be, able to, you'll be able to do anything, you'll be able to put team names and all sorts of sayings and things on them. But for today, first of all, you just need to know how to master the fold. But I will show you very quickly, just for something a little bit different, if you want to make a two-tone bow, the procedure is exactly the same as what we just did, except that you have two pieces of contrasting lycra, Make sure that the, the middle section here, there are, that, that it's a nice straight cut. Lay them out just as we did before with this one. You have your grow grain ribbon already with its backing paper peeled off. Find the centre of your ribbon there. Just fold it in half, you'll see it very clearly. And of course that centre fold you're going to just sit directly over that join there and then you can go ahead and press your ribbon onto those two pieces which I'll do in a moment and you'll be able to see when we flip it over the join is, is, is quite perfect. That join isn't seen from the front anyway, it all goes to the back and that's how we make a nice, what we call a tick-tock bow, a two-toned bow. So I'll press that one up and you'll be able to see that one as well. So there we go, that's our TikTok bow, all trimmed up, given a little press and you can see there that joins nice and straight, that'll be hidden behind the back of the bow and that just would make up a really nice bow without having to do much at all. That's going to be quite pretty. Today I'm going to fold up for you though the blue one, the aqua one because it's going to be a lot easier for you to see. Now, what we're going to do here, you've got your template printed out and you can see that it's already the shape of like a charity bow where we do the, where we do the fold over. All right, so I've marked it out for you so that you just line up your tails. Don't worry about what's going on up here. Line up your tails. And remember that I've made this template to exactly suit the length of the ribbon that you're working with and also the width of the ribbon. Now here is the part that no bow company wants you to know. <laughs> Here's the secret. This is the fold. Now the fold is the most important part of a really good looking cheer bow. Before we do that, of course I should have done that, we're going to, here's where our alligator clip comes in. Fold your bow in half, we're going to grab our alligator clip and I want you to clip it just in the centre, just at the top at the centre. Okay, so with the clip to you, do your fold, line up your tails there, line it up on that edge exactly on that edge, worth taking the time. Okay, next step, I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to slip it under there and I want to hold where it meets together there. I want to hold it there nice and firm. I don't want it to move and I don't want it to slip. So that's the first thing we do. I'm going to pick it up and then I want to hold it again with my thumb and my other hand so that that part's not going to slip. Now I want to, now that I've got that nice and firm and it's not going to move, I can hold that and that will stay right where it is and I can pick up the back of my bow. And because I've put my little clip in, I know exactly where the centre is. And what I want to do 
is pull that back piece down until it's level, until it's right level there with that axis. And here's where the clip comes in handy. So I'm going to hold that there. Still being careful to keep it all together. It's all firm and you can see that I can just see the very top of the back of that ribbon and then I'm going to clip that down there right there on the join. That's just to hold it. That's just like I said before another pair of hands so that's really useful. And I've pretty much clipped it sort of the full length of that that little I think it's a 45 mil, millimeter. I keep saying mil it's millimetre and our first fold, pull your bow forward, our first fold is backwards. So backwards in a little way, have a good look at how far I'm doing that and then we make one little, I don't know what I'll call it, I guess I'll call it a little, a little bump there. I'm going to hold that one thumb there, I'm going to make another fold. I'm going to make another little bump. See the second little bump there? And I want my tails to sit back. So when I've got those two, one, two there, it all looks neat and tidy. I can remove my clip and then I can fold the top part of my bow over. So now I've got three. One, two, three. Here's where I need my little twisty ties. That's two together there and I've just folded it in half and I'm just going to go from the front. I have all of those. Hold it over to the back and I'm going to twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it just to hold. Now at this point when you turn this bow over you're going to think you've completely made a dog's dinner of it because really that looks quite dreadful. But here's where we pop it down. I'm going to pull out the top loop, I'm going to pull out the second loop. And it's just about adjusting your bow. Tails need to be pulled out and down. Look at your bow back and front. Check that your loops are nice and even that your tails are pulled down even, look at your bow back and front. Back of the bow should look something like that. Fold it up nice and quite neat. You can see now why that TikTok bow, you wouldn't see any of that join. Alright, so we're just going to fold, depending on how long your twisty ties are, you're probably going to need to trim that, that little edge there. So I'm just going to trim that end off. There, just that little bit of excess, and I'm going to push that that little end wound bit down. All right. Now, generally, our next step would be to have we have a hot glue gun ready. Generally, our next step would be to glue our hair tie on. That's what we would do next. If you're looking to add an extra tie to tie over your hair tie, perhaps it's for a competition bow to really keep it in snug, this is the time where you would put in an extra piece of ribbon. You will put in you know, a fairly longer piece of ribbon. Just use your six millimeter and that would be glued in just a dob of hot glue right there at this stage. That's when that goes on. I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to show you the standard bow. And so first thing we do is some hot glue right there on the back. 
find the join in your little hair tie and glue that spot. Just hold that there for a moment. Don't worry about any glue threads, that sort of thing, they can all be pulled off afterwards. Hot glue is a little bit messy to work with like that. So you've just got that hair tie glued on directly onto your twisty tie. Now this is the next step. Now we're really getting into secrets. This is a step that, that we've devised that I think makes your bow a lot stronger. It makes them last so much longer and stops those headbands coming off. With my little piece, my little back blocking piece I call it, I just hold it in my tweezers. I hope you can see that. And liberally coat it with the hot glue. You've got to work really quickly. And we're just going to pop it straight over the hair tie. Hold it down. It's just an extra, it's an extra secure blocking for that hair tie. It just gives us a surface to do our final tie up of our ribbon on that won't pull up. It just protects that hair tie that little bit more. So just let that dry there. I'll show you on the back of the other one that's finished. You can see there it is in there. It's hidden in there because we're going to do our tie up over the top of that. All right, so that's what we've done there. So we flip our bow over, try and get rid of any of our glue strings for now. Check again that your bow is matched and all nice and matched and even. And here's where we take our centering ribbon. I usually cut my centering ribbon a little bit too long, but I don't want to be fussing trying to tie up a ribbon that's too short, especially when you're working with hot glue because you've only got so much time to work with it. Now, here is where we do things differently to most bow companies. Most people at this point now would use their six mil ribbon and they would wrap. So they would wrap around a couple of times, straight around with the ribbon, straight around and around and glue it at the back. Okay, that's how most people wrap their bows. When you do that, you create basically a bow that will pivot. So the bow will do this. What we really want in a cheerleading bow is that the bow sits up on top of the head on a nice high ponytail and sits up like Mickey Mouse ears. That's really what we're after. So when we, were do when we were designing this bow, I tried to come up with a way that just gives us a better anchoring point at the back that stabilizes that bow. When you put it in your hair, you can go through a full routine and at the end of it, you've still got these lovely Mickey Mouse ears sitting straight up. Lots of times you see cheerleaders walking around with bows that are flat like that and that usually means the bow is wrapped and so it has this pivot. We're just controlling that a little by tying it. Now, when we tie it, of course, the end result is perhaps not as tidy as a wrapped bow. But because we've going, we're going to knot it twice, it's never going to come undone. Whereas a wrapped bow, after you've taken it in and out of your hair a few times, the edges start to kick up, curl up, and I, I'm sure many of you have had cheerleading bows and that's usually the first place where it starts to wear, where that little end starts coming up and then it'll unravel and then it's no good. So even though that ends up looking maybe not as quite as tidy, it'll sit better in your hair and your bow will last just so much longer. So I'm going to show you that one today and that's, that's a big secret. So we start with our glue gun. So now we're going to put in our centering bow. So we're going to just put a string of a uh, line of glue, hot glue, just on that front section that we can see, right round. You've got to work fairly quickly. Get the centre of your centering ribbon straight over the top. 
make sure it's straight and even and make sure that we're pressing it down. It's always worth giving it, you know, just a few seconds just for that glue to, to just to cool slightly and hold. Once you're sure about that, flip your bow over and we're going to tie off the back. So we're going to do our first knot. We are going to put some glue on here, but I find it easier to manage if you tie your knot first. So it's just a normal simple knot. Get your knot down to there. This is where, you, you, you know, having a couple of extra pairs of hands would be good, but you'll get used to it. You'll find that the, the more you do it, the more nimble you'll get with your hands. It might all feel a bit strange and clumsy at the beginning. So I've tied a knot. I'm trying to get everything out of the way for you to see. I've tied a knot. I'm just going to put a spot of glue right there on my backing, my back rocker there. This is a little bit of glue that's going to hold my first knot and I'm going to tie my first knot as firm as I can. You see that there? And that's just incorporated into the glue and it's really, really firm. Right, now we're going to make our second knot. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. Another little spot of glue, just to be sure. And we're going to Now don't worry too much about which way you tie your knot, whether you go this way or that way, it really doesn't matter. So you can see that that's tied off. That's not going to go anywhere. You've got a beautiful, neat front that's really firm, much firmer than a wrapped bow because you can put that leverage on it because you're using a knot. So at the moment, you can see that it's pretty awful. What we're going to do now is we're going to create couple of little tabs that we're going to glue down. So you'll get to know, after you've made a couple, you'll get to know exactly how to, what direction to tie your ends off. So snip your little ends, always on the diagonal because that prevents fraying. And then all you need to do, pull your headband down and you just need to pop some hot glue on each one and we're going to glue them down. Again, I've made so many of these. You work out as you go along how to hold them. Practice makes perfect definitely in this business. So it's just a matter of anchoring those down. Same with the other side. So it's kind of like a little bow tie at the back. Can you see that there? Glue down. And like I said, maybe not the prettiest picture, but now that hair tie has an anchor point. It has a stabilizing point. It's not free to spin and rotate. So that's why I devised that method and I hope that's useful to you. You really will see a difference in, in when the bow is in your hair. Alright, so that one's glued up. All done. Next step. There we go. Next step is just cutting your tails. Once your bow is made, if you want a bow with shorter tails, of course you can trim those right up to there. I like a bow that's as big as it can possibly be, so I, 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 that's why I utilise the full length of that heat and bond strip and I want nice long tails. Because we usually put text and graphics and things on our bows, we like lots of room for that. So cutting the tails, have a look at it at the front, you'll be able to see whether you've got your tails nice and even. If they are, you know that you can cut your V shape in just like this. You can cut your tails on a diagonal. I generally cut them on uh, with a little V shape. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I just fold my tails together right on the edge 
and because I know that my tails are the same length as each other I just start just a little way in from the corner and I'm going to make a nice deep V straight into the center that's our first tail you can check it again and you can see you can make sure that they're the same and then you can do the same with the other side you can if you like get your other piece to measure it as you're cutting it you'll find after a while it'll just be second nature to you and you'll know exactly how deep to cut and of course you can also always cut a little bit more off and then you have a look look at your bow from every angle and you should have a nice bow nice and even tails cut loops the same size now I'm just going to show you how to burn the edges of those so that they never fray and they'll last for ages. So now I'm going to show you how I treat the edges of my bows. You can use just a standard little gas clicky lighter. You can use a lighter. You can use a wood burner, a welding tool. Over the years I found that this one to be the best if you're making a lot of bows. Mine's called a little burns omatic It's just a little uh, butane torch. And you probably won't be able to see this happening. And you, all you're wanting to do is just seal the edges. It'll just lightly melt and fuse the edges together there. Perhaps you can see that. It just darkens it slightly. And that's all you want to do. You don't want big gluey globs on the edges. You just want it to be sealed so that it won't fray. So it's still a nice neat finish. Some people use fray check and, and glues or nail polishes and so on on the edges, but it really does just leave a horrible bumpy edge. Whereas this is nice and clean. Once you've done a few, You'll find it's really easy, it's really quick. You can see how quick it can be if you're doing a team order. So there we go. I would be lost without that little tool. So that's it. Nicely finished. You can check your edges, you can feel that it's burned and sealed off there. So there we have your standard. And the whole thing with cheer bows when you're making team orders if you want all your bows to look exactly the same, that's why the fold is so important. So when you make a team order, you want to be able to make 20 bows that all look exactly the same. And of course, if you use the template that I've provided, you follow the method, you'll be able to make bows that you're really, really proud of and you know will last. So there we go. All done. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video today. If you have, you could give it a thumbs up, that would be view. Remember to subscribe so that you don't miss the little tutorial about how to put the text on your bows. I hope most of all that you found it useful and that you'll really be able to make some great bows for yourself. You could make a, bow, a cheer bow bag like this, that'd be wonderful. I know that my girls would love to see some photos of the cheer bows that you've made, so you can simply hashtag payitforward underscore family, Instagram and Facebook, and then we can all like them. So until then, it's hooroo for me.